أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us life, who gave us energy All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us the opportunity to gather in his house All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who not only created us, who fashioned us, who gave us the ability to be alive who gave us the opportunity and the means to communicate but then he didn't just leave us alone like this is some episode of friends he created us and then sent anbiya for us and this in itself is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being amongst those who were created and then for them was sent messengership is a fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us and in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us we see the story of Adam alayhi salam, which today we intend to bring to a close to introduce the story of Habil and Qabil or Cain and Abel and then to introduce one situation with Prophet Sheath alayhi salatu was salam. This, in this, we intend today to finish up bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. We want to finish the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam excuse me, of Adam alayhi salam. But one of the things that we've already covered already, and that was the fact that Adam alayhi salam made a error. We didn't want to use the word mistake last week. He made an error, and what was that error? What, what happened last week? What did he do? He did what? He picked from the tree. So he wasn't intended to eat from the tree, and he ate from the tree. Who made him eat from the tree? The tree Shaytan did, and I need you to revisit that story because it's, it's paramount for this week. So Shaytan comes to him in Surah A'raf, and we find this story how many times in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels to make sajda to Iblis, and Iblis did not. What was, how many times did this story occur in the Quran? Exactly, six times. I'm glad that you're checking. Six times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this story. Started in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 30, where the creation of man started. And after he picked from the tree, in Surah A'raf, we know that Iblis came to him and said, if you eat from the tree, you'll live forever, or you'll become an angel. Flat out lie, but what did he do? He appealed to man's emotion. Upon this, we know how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us, because after Adam alayhi salam made this transgression, what did Allah teach him? And I really need the answer for this one. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach him after he made this transgression? Anyone remember? Surah A'raf, ayah number 23. What did he teach? What words did he teach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because this would not be a class. This would just be a whole bunch of really nice stories if you don't learn something from each class. So the first one was the introduction. Last week we focused around one dua. Surah A'raf, ayah number 23. And I'm going to go ahead and give us two minutes to repeat it. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tawfir lana وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ I'm asking as a request, please memorize this dua. You have seven days to memorize this dua. If you'd like me to read it for you, if you'd like me to record it, we'll say it several times. But try your best to memorize this dua because when Adam made the transgression, it's not just you asking 
saying sorry to Allah, it's you accepting that Allah created us for what purpose? To forgive us. It's a very phenomenal philosophy. If you believe Allah created you to love you, Allah created you so He could show you mercy, Allah created you so He could have rahmah on you, then you'll say, Warhamna, anta maulana, fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. You will make this dua. So we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved us, He created us and taught us how to apologize. We praise Allah for all of these gifts and I encourage you to do the same. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimatihi. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. What's up guys? السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. I know that one family is not here, right? That one family who kind of sits here, they speak very loudly, they kind of give everyone. Encouragement will actually make dua. Uh, their family lost uh, a very young person, about 20 years old. He was uh, very sick. Uh, you need not be sad, he was sick for a long time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him to himself. And I want you to make dua for their family, not for him. He's fine, he's with Allah, and he's happy. I have a 20 year old uh, family member of them, and he passed away uh, due to some ailment. So that family that always comes, we make dua for them. But we also realize that it is a part and parcel of us returning to our Creator that we will be reminded people do pass. So we make dua for our brother and we're happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him ease. So we start today and I ask you to be just as excited or as energized as if the, the room and everyone was here. So help me uh, follow through very quickly. What are we doing here in this, in this room? What, are we, what have we been studying for the last two weekends, two weeks? Lives of? Lives of the Prophets, the prophetic dynasty. We didn't want to study the Prophets separately, but we wanted to look at one Prophet, extract his attitude, his, the way he acted, the way he interacted, and then pass those on. And like a, big, uh, like a big picture, a big painting, we wanted to take the characteristics of all of the Prophets and build the complete structure, attitude of a human being. And once we get there, we will see the character of Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that was the first week. Understanding that prophets had an attitude. They had a, a way that they interacted. What did we cover last week? The story of creation. We said that before man was created, 50,000 years before that, the pen was created. Allah instructed it to write. All of humanity's history was written. And from that we wrote one hadith down. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, that the only thing that can change the decree of Allah, what has already been written, what's that thing? Dua, dua, dua. Allah created us, and we, we remember the hadith, ad dua huwa al-ibada. ad dua huwa al-ibada. Dua, it is ibada. It is the prayer. It is venerating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we moved on. We said the creation of man. What was created before the clay creature uh, that was the hollow outside of Adam salam? All souls were created. Remember, all of us were created, the good, the bad, the ugly, Kobe Bryant and the guy who created the Lamborghini. They were all created at the same time. Standing there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا Allah asked, Am I not your Lord? We all answered, yes we are. That's why you should not be afraid to give da'wah. And I'm going to start off from today. When you meet someone, you're like, oh my God, I don't want to tell them something about Islam. It might seem awkward. Friends, when you tell someone about Allah, I guarantee you, either they'll reject you or they'll stop and pause. They get this blank look on their face. Why? Because you're reminding them of something that they witnessed thousands of years ago and that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said kullu mawludin yuladu ala fitra that everyone is born or come upon a fitra a nature 
So human beings don't need to be told, a prophet said, don't lie. The child will know. When he grows up and he hits someone, he'll be like, I think I did something wrong. Regret. They're natural human inclinations. We call it fitrah. So from there, we realized that every human being meant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Qalu bala shahidna. We testify in front of you. Then the situation where Iblis, what did we say last week? Iblis, there were three, th three things that happened. We said there were angels created, jinn created, and in order to illustrate a point last week, this wasn't very grounded in historical fact, we said there was a third type, and you'd be pretty baller if you could figure this out. We said, la, bad, brother. Alhamdulillah, Tabrez, the beautiful name and the beautiful answer. He reminded us that bin is a third creature. So there were fire creatures, light creatures, and we said not historically as accurate as we'd want it to be, but there is a narration to say that there was a creature called bin, it lived and it was causing fasad on the earth, these creatures. Iblis, the good version, and, uh, and the jinn came to the earth and they think about it like a Lord of the Rings action. One group just beat the other group and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was happy. Iblis comes back and he says, Allah, I have cleaned this place and now we pick up and we picked up on that concept. So we take this with a grain of salt to say that maybe the riwayah of the bin, we don't know exactly how strong it is. Adam is standing as a clay creature. Iblis walks over, knocks on him. What does Iblis find? He finds out that he's hollow. In the other riwayah, finds that his stomach is hollow. So that means the desires of man are endless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows the life into Adam alayhi salam and as soon as his eyes and the most respected organ in the body, the head, is illuminated, his eyes start to look around and when his hands are free, what's the first thing he does? He tries to grab at the fruit. He tries to reach at the fruit so no matter what we as human beings, we're human. We're going to want this world. Let's just accurately measure how much we want. He, Adam alayhi salam, is then sent to Jannah. In Jannah, we picked up the story that he was tricked. Now what we're going to try to do now is try to close up some of the smaller facts of what happened when Adam alayhi salam came to the earth. So Adam alayhi salam, who did he meet in Jannah, sisters? Hawa, and how did he meet her? What was the situation that came about? Dua, she was a prayer. He prayed for a treasure and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her. And as we read from the poet who quoted last, we quoted last week, that the woman was created from the rib, not from the feet so she could be stepped on, not from the head so that she could be dominant, but from beneath the arm, close to the heart, so she could be held close, loved and admired. This is treat your women like a treasure and sisters, be of that which is venerated and which is a treasure. Now from this we remove one small point which is going to come up today. Allah created men physically apt and created women to be beautiful. There is more innate beauty. This is very important. I know we have a younger crowd today. But you need to realize, because sometimes people get overwhelmed. They're like, well, why don't men have to wear hijab? Do you want me to cover this? Really? I mean, Allah already put something to cover it. It's a lot of hair. So if you, I mean, if you think about it, it's not the most gorgeous thing in the world, right? But on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a creature who all would say, female, male would say, this is something that is a treasure. This is something that shines. Take this point, it's going to come up big today in the story of Sheith alayhi salam. So we realize these two creatures were sent to the earth. Ba'duhum awliya ba'd. And each one of them was going to come down and then came with them Iblis. They came to the earth. And I told you this on the first day. Can someone tell me how many years did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise Adam alayhi salam? 1,000 years. Go ahead, you can call it out buddy. How much is it? 1,000 years. And upon receiving 1,000 years of life, before all of the earthly situation started, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed Adam alayhi salam all of the creatures. Upon showing them all of the human beings created, he fell in love, his sight fell on one person. Who was that? Dawood alayhi salam. And he saw the light between his eyes or he saw his face to be very bright. And he said, Allah, I love him. Give him 40 years of my life. Allah said, are you sure? And it was signed. This is where we're going to pick up from. Now, Adam alayhi salam comes down to the earth with his wife Hawa. Alayhi salatu wassalam, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon her. 
some facts. Hawa salam had 20 sets of twins. 20 sets of twins. Each set of twin was a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl, a boy and a girl. So you would see the fact that in this early stage of human society, the two twins were not allowed to marry and procreate, but a brother, a, a, a male, and a female from another set of, from another group, they were able to be together, and under the guise of marriage, were able to procreate. However you want to understand this through genealogy, all we do is we say this is the history. We can get into this maybe when the crowd is slightly more appropriate. So from these 20 twins came two sons. Now you realize two very important things that happened here. The first is one of the sons was named Habil and the second son was named Qabil. And in English, Cain and Abel. From the people, and we know from the narrations that Qabil was not an attractive man. He was very harsh, not easy to get along with, what you would almost call thick-headed. You know when you try to talk someone, to someone and they're just like, bro, he doesn't get it. That kind of person, Qabil. Then his brother was Habil. He was actually pleasant to look at, a very nice person. And you almost saw him like, you don't want to say a goody two-shoes, but he was very straight-laced. He was very straight-laced. Upon this, we find in, throughout the Qur'an, but you're also going to find, if you're writing this down, Surah Ma'idah, ayah number 27. Surah Ma'idah, ayah number 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ بْنَيْ آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ Allah tells us the story about Habil and Qabil. Two things happened. First off, Qabil was not physically attractive. His twin sister, very beautiful. So now when the, ma the, the partnership was going to happen, ha Abel was now supposed to marry who? Was supposed to marry Habil's sister. And he said, no. Why? And unfortunately, Habil's sister, the sister of Abel, not, not easy on the eyes. Not exactly the prettiest in the world. What happened here? Qabil, Cain said, I, I, this is busted. I don't want to marry her. This is not fair. Why does he get her? And he was uncomfortable with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this, there was a lot of discourse. There was a lot of discomfort. And he actually said, no, I'd rather be with my sister. And there was this uncomfortable feeling going back and forth. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed and gave a message that they should both bring a sacrifice. Whoever sacrifice is accepted, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take this sacrifice and He will accept it and then the judgment will be made accordingly. You're all with me, basically? So here we find out to some extent, we find the narrations not, and we're going again into the details, that Abel was a shepherd, he had sheep, and Cain was a farmer. So what we find was there were no poor people, there's only a set of you know, 20, 20 twins. So there was no poor people to give the sacrifice to, so both of them took their sacrifice up to a mountain. The narrations tell us that Abel brought the best of the sheep, the best of the lamb, and he left it there as a sacrifice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Cain, Qabil, showed up with some rotten fruit and vegetables. No exaggeration, the narration tell us they were the worst of the fruits, not even dirty fruits. They were rotten fruits, and they left it there. And in his kind of thick-headedness, he walked down and said, okay, I still don't understand this. He constantly poking at the decree of Allah, the commandment of Allah. And you can actually take a step back here and say, the commandment of Allah was for able to marry Qabil's sister, but he didn't like that. So then he continued. Eventually we find bilhaq, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in ayah number 27 of Surah Ma'idah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted Abel's sacrifice of the lamb, the sheep, whatever was there, and he did not accept Qabil. Now this is something that we realize. You know sometimes we pray Salah, sometimes we do a good action, and they were like, okay, Allah, I'm done. And we kind of just turn away and be like, I'm done, you should be happy with me. But this is where our sincerity comes. And we talked about this last week. When Ibrahim salam finished building the Kaaba, 
I mean, like, it doesn't get bigger than this, guys. He finished building the Kaaba. What did he say to Allah? Allahumma taqabbal minna. Oh Allah, accept what I did. Not that it's good enough. Nothing's good enough for you. Allah, accept what I did. Wattuba alayna and forgive me. For what? For building the Kaaba? No, for any shortcomings along the way. When we pray salah, astaghfirullah al-azim, astaghfirullah al-azim, when we finish. When we break our fast, a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. When you're good to your parents, thank Allah. When you remove Allah from the picture, you end up like Iblis. You end up like, like Qabil, very thick-headed, very arrogant. So upon this, Abel turns over to his brother and said, Allah accepted mine, he didn't accept yours. There's a chance. What happened, and this was something that I, I give this lesson to the brothers. It doesn't affect women as much, but this is the beginning of time. We have something inside of us innately, and that is our ego. When we allow our ego to start dictating who's more religious, well, he's got a beard and a topi, and he's, he looks like he's acting religious. You know people do that to people who are trying to follow the sunnah? Oh, he, he's showing off. He's like, Man, how is he showing off? We start, the ego starts to kick. Oh, that girl, she's wearing hijab. She must think she's better than me. But she didn't say anything to you. We start to let the ego overwhelm. And that's what happened to Qabil. We all know the story, so I'm going to give you some small details and we'll move through it. If you'd like to study more, of course, I want to veer you away from, from the biblical version. In the biblical version, they were fighting over a girl. They were not fighting over a girl here. This was his discomfort with who was going to marry, but he was angry that, he, that his sacrifice was accepted and mine wasn't. And does anyone know what happened next? He, not, he didn't just kill his brother. Remember, human beings don't know how to do anything until you do what? Until you show them. Someone doesn't know what smoking is until they see it. Someone doesn't know what backbiting is until they do it. No one knows how to lie until it's done. Iblis, shaytan, showed Qabil. You do realize human beings can die. And if you were to by accidentally take this thing over here and, you know, bang it on this side of his head, he'll die. And that's it. That's all shaytan needs to do. All shaytan needs to do is say, you do know he has a Facebook, right? You do know that you could tweet him, right? You know if you looked him up online. You know if you saw this, no one would see you seeing it. You know if you took a little bit of interest, well, this is what interest. All he has to do is indicate that's how it's done. Then he walks away. There's a famous old poet who wrote that Iblis will come into a baker's shop and put a little bit of butter on the wall. You all know this one, right? And then a fly falls on the butter and a lizard tries to eat the fly and then someone swats the lizard and then it stops. It's how shaitan starts. He does something small and he makes the ruckus for someone else. Adam alayhi salam, son Qabil, was taught this is how you kill and he killed. But the lesson that we need to extract from ayah number 27 of Surah Ma'ida is it's not only that he taught him, but Iblis will only stay with you as long as you do, as long as you're in the act. As long as you're chatting, as long as you're in the act of excitement, he'll stay. As soon as you lie, as soon as you commit zina, as soon as you do something wrong, where does he go? Allah, I didn't do anything. This insan, man, stuck for Allah. Insan is just, Allah, these guys are bad. He will split in a heartbeat. And we realize two things from this lesson. Iblis will stay with you until you reach a state. Remember, lust is not an act. What is lust as defined? In your brain, it's a state of mind. Anger is not an act. It's a state of mind. Iblis will fan the flame until you pop. Then he walks away. Then human, be human nature takes over. So Iblis taught him how to kill, and as soon as he killed, we realize that Qabil felt regret. And then Shaytan hits his second target. He makes you do haram by whispering, and then after you have fallen and made the mistake, what does he do? He says, Astaghfirullah. How could you? You're going to ask forgiveness from Allah? Gee, look how dirty you are. And that regret overtakes you. And really, that's when you feel horrible. 
do not fall prey to shaitan as narrated by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the sound books. When a believer feels happiness in his good deeds and sadness in his bad deeds, it's a sign that he's a mu'min. When you pray salah and you're like, thank you Allah, I prayed fajr today. And you wake up after fajr and you wake up again and you're like, Allah, thank you for fajr. And you're happy, sign you're your believer. When you miss a prayer, when you disrespect your father, when you listen to a song and you're like, man, this is filthy. It's got a nice beat, but it's filthy. When you do that and you walk away and have remorse in your heart, sign that you're a believer. Qabil felt it, he felt remorse, but now we realize what happened. He went back up into the mountains and dad was like, who's dad, by the way? Adam alayhi salam, how's your day? What's going on? Everything's good? And he had this gloominess, this sadness with him. The gloominess pushed him so much that he didn't know what to answer to his dad, eventually packed up his stuff, came down the mount, from the mountain and said, I'm not living here anymore. And does anyone know how he learned to bury his brother? The crow. A crow came, pecked at the earth, put some seeds inside, and he even said it was remorse. It was the beginning of depression, anxiety. The gloominess that fills our life today was there. He didn't see it as a crow teaching him a gift. He saw it as... What kind of sorry human being am I that I don't even know how to bury someone? So when you sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you an angel, sends you some words, sends you a lecture, don't feel self-pity. Allah didn't create us to loathe. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Say, Allah, you're so high that when I made the sin, it didn't affect you, I won't sin again. Four things that we take from when we make a mistake. And I want you to know this, I've been repeating it every week. Then we move directly after he buried his son. How are the four stages to Tawbah? You have to know this because then it will just become another Lives of Prophet series. And I can give you that on DVD. And you can listen to it on your own. Four things. Tawbah. Give me the number one stage of Tawbah. When I do something wrong, what's the first thing? And young people, you should hit this on the head. When you do Tawbah, before you say Astaghfirullah, what should you do? Go ahead. Feel bad, know that it's wrong, beautiful, excellent. You should say, Allah, this is wrong. Astaghfirullah al-Azim comes as an, as an outcome to something being wrong. Why is this? Friends, I have been in places where people are drinking alcohol. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. I've, yeah, it's real, it's real. Do they believe that it's wrong? Allahu alam, I don't judge their heart, they're intoxicated. But when you feel something's wrong, you say, Allah, this is wrong, and you push it away, then you say, Astaghfirullah. Now, we don't judge. If anyone took from my words that we judge these people, don't. We don't know the situation of the people who are left in these, uh, in these hard times. Just make dua, Rabbana la tuzil qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana. Wahab lana min ladunka rahma inna kanta wahab Let it never be that you are attending prophetic dynasty in the masjid at 8 o'clock and then four years from now you're sitting in a very uncomfortable place. Let that not be the case. Make dua for those people who are in tough times and then do the same. Acknowledge that it's wrong. Ask for Allah's forgiveness. Replace it with a good deed. So if you, you did something haram, you missed a prayer, make it up. You disrespected your parents, go and ask for their forgiveness. You lied to someone, tell them. You backbited about someone. Even on social media, go to that person, text that person, I backbited about you, I need your forgiveness. It will never happen again after that. Fourth, what can you do? Make intention. And I had a lot of trouble on this. Remember last week, I was like, I could do the first three personally. But I got stuck on the fourth because I'm like, Allah, I'll never miss a prayer again. Then what happened? I miss a prayer again. But the intention is, Allah, I never want to make this sin again. Allah, I talked to this boy in my school for a little bit longer. My heart was telling me, you gave the math homework. You gave the information. Now you're just chit-chatting. Allah, I'll never do this again. When my heart is telling me it's, it's wrong, then I'll leave it alone. So Qabil buried his brother realized what was wrong, realized that he made a mistake, and he went away. Qabil is now living on the flat plains of the earth. We have approximately 20 minutes to now move to the most important part for the evening, and that would be... No, don't do this to me. We now introduce a new prophet into the system, and that new prophet is... Sheath alayhi salatu wasalam, the second prophet that we have covered. 
in two topics. We've been doing the introduction and Adam alayhi salam. Now we need to bring the end of Adam alayhi salam. So we realize that Adam alayhi salam was at the end of his life. 960 years of his life have come to pass. The angel came to him and what did he say? Are you sure? I think I got 40 years left on this bad boy. I'm almost sure I got some more time. Angel said, don't you remember you gave the life to Dawood? And what did Adam alayhi salam say? No, I didn't. Flat out, the words are in Bukhari. No, I didn't. So the Prophet wasallam said, Adam forgot. So the son of Adam will forget too. We said we will give, we will give a chance to human beings if they forget. Adam alayhi salam was happy to go back to Allah. We take one moment to take this phrase. Sometimes I want you to take the attitude of prophets. In, a, in a, the time and age that we live right now, if I told you a young man died, you would feel sad. And I encourage, feel, have rahma, tawbah, be sad. But if I told you someone happily went to Allah, you should rejoice. If you hear, and I know it's hard, but once a mother, once a mother told me at the, that we were burying her three-year-old child who had drowned in the bathtub, and I was crying, and she said, don't cry. My kid's going to heaven. What are you crying for? My child goes to Allah. I'm happy. My eyes will weep later because I miss my kid. But she said, I don't miss my kid as much as I miss speaking to Allah. So I make dua to Allah. It's a different perspective. It's a different way to look at life. So when Adam was 960 and he was about to die, he was happy because where was he going? He was unlike any of us. He was like, oh, this place is done? This place where we have to go to the bathroom and pick our nose and cut our nails? I remember that. At the end of Adam salam's life, he had gotten fairly ill. He got a bad fever. And in this fever, he called to Allah. He said, Allah, do you know those fruits that were in Jannah? Could I have some of those now? Because he was sick, and he, but he, when you're sick, you remember the best of times, right? You go to the best of times. He said, Allah, let me get some of the Jannah fruits. Can I get some of the Jannah fruits? And the riwayah tells us that he told some of, Allah spoke to him and told, uh, tell some of your, instructed him, if you go to the top of this mountain, you will find similar. Nothing like Jannah, but similar to Jannah. So upon this, he, Adam alayhi salam, happily went back to his creator, and we rewind the tape, at the age of 100, he had a son, and the name of his son was? Sheath. Say it properly for me, bring your tongue out, everyone. Sheath. Or pronounced in uh, English as Seth, right? As in that uh, Seth is correct. And uh, Mufti Menk has his opinion that it could also be referring in Gujarati to Seth. Allahu Adam, I respect that opinion. Uh, it could be an extension. Allahu Alam, we leave it at this. Sheath alayhi salam. And I, uh, really now, I want you to buckle up. Because what happens at the next point of this story, it's tremendous. First off, Sheath alayhi salam, not mentioned in the Quran at all. Where do we find his narration? Write it down. In the books of Bukhari, we find the narration that, of the Prophet Sheath. So we know it's confirmed. Number two, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, 104 scrolls, you know like psalm scrolls, were revealed unto mankind, 104. 50 of these scrolls went to Sheetha alayhi salam. A very big deal. So 50 of these scrolls were on the Prophet Sheetha alayhi salam. And there was something specific. Sheetha alayhi salam lived in the mountains with his dad, Adam alayhi salam. And down in the valley lived who? Qabil, good call. Qabil, uh, Qabil lived down there with his tribes people. So now let's take a step forward. After we realized that he was a prophet, Adam alayhi salam, son Sheath, only had one thing to tell his people. What story did he constantly remind his people about? Yes. Cain, actually no, because Cain and Abel hadn't come to them as much. Just the fact that someone had killed them, one step before that. Cain and Abel did come. What was the story, only story that came before that from the prophets? Sheath, okay, very good. The prophets only remind of other prophets. So who is the only other prophet? Adam alayhi salam. Good, good catch though. Adam alayhi salam ate from the tree. His son reminded the kids. You know what happened to grandpa? Grandpa was in Jannah. 
there Iblis tricked him by telling him lies, don't fall prey to this. This was the, so the people of Sheath salam were well equipped. Shaytan couldn't hit them directly. Here is where we open up the trailer. You've got a beautiful mountain close to the sky, Adam salam and his son, and the family members live there. Down in the valley, we have a young person, young man. He is now the leader of his tribe. His name is Qabi. The people live up there. Sheath salam tells them, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ our grand, your grandfather, he was the Khalifa. He was one who was going to come after the other. And remember, he was tricked by Iblis. You don't fall same prey. Iblis now needs to do his work. We find throughout the Quran, Iblis promising Allah, I am going to mess with the lives of these people. I will mess up the men by hypnotizing them. And I will make the women talk and devour each other and to be desperate housewives. I will make this happen. Upon this, Iblis decides, I can't get to Sheith Salam's people. So you know what I'm going to do? He disguised himself. He came in the form of an old man. Now, here's the key factor. Sheith Salam's men were very attractive. They were beautiful people, right? Sheith Salam's, the women in the town, were beautiful. They were, and not the beauty, the photoshopped beauty you see of today. They were beautiful in the fact that they were treasured from Allah. And if you remember from the story of Qabil, how did the men look? The men? Not, not, not very pretty, right? Not very pretty. So Qabil's men, not pretty, but the women were attractive. In Sheith Salam's time, the men were beautiful, and the females, not so. Not so thumbs up. So here we realize now, in the scrolls that were revealed to Sheith salam, it said, you are not allowed to mix with Qabil's people. And then that narration comes up, that Qabil's people, that Qabil had killed someone. You cannot mix. So these two generations were not allowed to mix. Iblis is stuck. These guys know my tricks up here. And these, this tribe over here, I know they killed people, but I don't know what to do. In comes the most dramatic scene in the Quran when it comes to shaitan's game. Surah Bani Israel, start in about ayah 36 to ayah 50. Iblis comes to the people of Qabil. Their men were not attractive, the females were beautiful. He comes to them and says, I want to work amongst you. I used to live with sheathed people, but I defected. I don't like living there anymore. Too many rules, they're too godly. I want to come live with you guys. So they're like, okay, pretty good looking guy, whatever. Let's see, what, let's see how this works. Old man, come work with us. So Iblis lived amongst Qabil's people in the valley and he worked, he worked hard. He gained their trust until one day he took the leather skins as they were working and he took the leather skin and he stretched this leather skin. And he took this leather skin and he made a hole in it. And this is the beginning of time. So what did he do with this stretch kin screen over a bowl? He started to beat on it. They're like, yo, this is amazing. What is that? He goes, nothing. Something in time passed. Something I do between work. When I relax, I beat on this leather piece and it, it was basically a doll. Basically a drum, hollow on one side, leather on the top. And he beat it, and they're like, this is amazing. And he's like, yeah, it's nothing, not a big deal. So then, the days passed, and there are these small rocks, they're like magnetic rocks, right? Hemio, hemo, hemiocrite rocks. You can, I, I'm assuming, because the narration tells us metal, but I'm saying it's the beginning of time, so where did metal come from? So he found these rocks, these metal rocks, and what did he do with the rocks? Ding. Ding, ding, ding. He hit them together and they're like, yo, that's crazier than the dome sound. This is craziness. And he goes, nah, it's nothing. And the people gathered. And they used to work. All the people of Qabil, their only instruction was to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't have a very elaborate sharia. Ah. There wasn't zakah and you're wearing gloves and praying nawafil and salatu uh, tasbih. Nothing. Just remember Allah. So now you have 
you have a little bit of banging, you've got a little ting ting, and then out of a long tube, Iblis twisted a tube and blew on one side. Riwayah's narration tells us this, this was a bugle, not a trumpet, but a simple horn that opened up on one side. And if you think a drum and metal magnets banging together is amazing, could you imagine what you would think when you hear a horn? It, this was exotic. So Iblis, or the old man, would sit only for one hour on one day. And does anyone know what day this was? Saturday night. The original Saturday night club. And he would sit down, he would gather the, everyone, he would say, listen to this. And he would do this, and he would make sounds, and would cling together, and the people were mesmerized. Until when these things started to beat together, when these things started to click together, what happens to your body parts innately, naturally, by human nature? Because you're now going to be like, oh, Sheikh, what is music haram? Wait, I didn't say anything. All I said was when you tap, when you hear a beat, what happens innately to the body? You react. You're, you'll be listening to, to the news, right? ABC News will start. Da, 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 and you'll be like, oh, there you go. The brain starts to click. And some part of your body begins to move. Whether it's a snap, whether it's a clap, whether it's a tap. Upon this, Iblis sat and entertained them. It's not enough. So now Iblis, or this old man, is playing these instruments, and it was one night on Saturday. But think about it. Young women who are attractive, young men who would sit and work all day long, and this old man who just has this, he's got soul in him, he's got some sound. And they would sit and listen. One hour became two, two hours became three. And Saturday night, one hour, if you remember Saturday Night Live in the 70s, was one hour. Saturday Night Live, the comedic sketch, now runs as long as they can go. As long as they can go, it runs. You are turn on the, you're up for tahajjud, TV goes on. So Saturday Night Live is still on? Wow, what is this? Haram, let me pray tahajjud. Right? So you're, you're now telling yourself this one hour of, of, I'm not calling it music. I'm calling it sound that they had never heard. It went from one hour to two hours till it became a required time. Every Saturday night, the club was bumping. And it was bumping crazy. Iblis put the ball in motion. Iblis now goes back. Remember, we're not done here. A lot's going on. But once you get, once Rihanna tells you, turn the music up. When Jay-Z says, this is how it's supposed to be. When, when Kanye tells you, there's no church in the wild. When you hear 20 foes, cars and clothes. Then all of a sudden, you, things are flowing. You, things are going naturally. Iblis now walks over. You all know what I'm talking about, right? Because you might not know. Let, let me inform you about these things. You guys, alhamdulillah, I OK crowd. Iblis now goes over. We're gonna, our time is going to end here. Iblis now goes over to the people of Sheath. And does he use these tapping sounds? Not at all. So number one to my young people, the tapping or the synthesizing of sounds, let's be a little careful. And let's hang on to this story. Because the club is still bumping. But every club promoter needs what? Needs more people to go to the club. What's, I mean, what kind of club is, man, same old people. I mean, uh, maybe you all don't know, but here in Hollywood, there are clubs. And there, people wait in long lines. They want to entice more people to come. But here comes the second scenario. So now, Sheith salam is talking to his people, giving da'wah, remember, shaitan is going to come. Shaitan is going to do these things until an old man comes to the youth, the youth of Sheith and says, you know what, I never really understood the hikmah of why we aren't allowed to hang out with the people in the valley. I mean, I know Allah knows everything, but it doesn't make any sense to me. He went to the budding human young mind, not the elders who by the way, if you're an elder, you've probably seen Adam alayhi salam. But by this time, if Adam alayhi salam has passed away, you're a young person. You think you know everything. Your hormones are raging. You feel like you can do anything. And Iblis comes and says, so what's wrong with those cousins? Why can't you hang out with them? What's the hikmah in this law of Allah? Why pray? Why a beard? Why hijab? Doesn't make any sense to me. He poked a hole in the one law that they had, 
they can't hang out. All he did was say, so what's the hikmah? And I ask you this today. When someone comes to you and says, so why do you pray five times a day? You can, I promise I can give you a beautiful answer, but you don't need an answer. What's your answer when someone says, why do you pray five times a day? Because God said so. Why do you cover your head? Oh, it's modesty. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. And as a human being, I later on found out that here are some of the benefits. But if there is no physical benefit and it's 90 degrees outside and I'm wrapped up like a mummy and I am sweating and some girl says to me, aren't you hot in that? You'll say, yes, but I love Allah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest human being, the greatest creature to step foot on this earth. He used to stand, narrated by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, would stand in tahajjud, guaranteed Jannah fam, he met Allah. Allah gave him two treasures from a treasure chest underneath his throne called the last two ayahs of Surah Baqarah. How much more could Allah love you? He used to stand till his feet were swollen. You know when you take a long flight from here, California to New York, and New York and back, and we complain like babies, oh my back hurts, my feet hurt, Muhammad Rasulullah would smile. Until the fact where his feet would swell in sajda, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha would poke the sung, the sleeping feet. You know when your feet go to sleep? She would poke it to see if he was alive. And he said, I'm happy. When I can go through some some time and stand in front of Allah, it makes me happy. I ask you today, what makes us happy? What gives us happiness? It's okay to be happy by business going well or by, you know, you look nice today. It's great. But can we say, Allah, I love to get up and pray because it makes you happy. And we take the riwayah from the khutbah on Friday, narrated in the books of Bukhari and Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah is delighted. Fariha, Allah is happy. I cannot describe how Allah is happy, but let's be real. When you see the word Allah is delighted, it doesn't it just make your day? Allah is more delighted when a slave says astaghfirullah and turns to him and asks for his forgiveness than someone who lost his camel in the middle of the desert. Someone who's driving from here to Las Vegas and their car breaks down. It's not repairable at all. And all of a sudden a repairman comes. The riwayah says he loses his camel in the middle of the desert and all of a sudden he finds it. Allah is more happy when you say astaghfirullah than you are when you find your camel in the middle of the desert. Let us turn back to Allah. And when someone says, so why do you do these things? I do it because I'm in love with Allah. I'm doing, I do it because I love Muhammad Rasulullah. And then later on, you can narrate, why did Prophet have nine wives? I can take you through the whole thing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Why did this happen? Why did Prophet ﷺ cut down the trees of the Jewish tribes outside of Medina? Wonderful answer. But before we get there, who are we talking about? Who are we questioning? Who are we trying to analyze? Muhammad Rasulullah. Something to think about. So now comes Iblis, back in the story. Iblis says, so why aren't you allowed to hang out with them? What's wrong with you? You're not, you can't, don't have control over your nafs? Man, you're so filthy minded. Man, they're your cousins, bro. Man, he's weirdo. And upon this, some of the youth of Sheith some of the men. So let us realize, for the attraction, we realize Iblis penetrates into our ears. Young men, who do you think went to the club? You think the girls of Sheith or the guys? You know it's the guys. We always mess something up. The men, the young, and by the way, here's the problem. So these young men set out from the mountain to go down from the valley. Who were these guys again? I want you to think beautiful reform school. Very clean, good posture, beautiful men, their hair. Think about people who live up on the mountains, right? Beautiful hair, beautiful face, stature. When Allah says someone's beautiful, that not only means their physique, their beautiful teeth, the way they smile. And remember, they're innocent. They haven't seen haram and clubs yet. So you can see the innocence on their face. These beautiful, well-mannered men come down. And they say, well, let's go find out the hikmah of Allah. Let's go find out why Allah said no. So they came down from the mountain. They came and from a distance. What's going on, fam? Oh, yeah. Saturday night is bumping and thumping. They've got woofers and the whole nine. David Guetta is mixing up on the tables. Everyone's going crazy. 
And they're like, yo, what, what? I, what? I missed that one. I didn't get the invitation to that. They came closer. And their intrigue lit up their faces. They came closer and closer. So now we have be beating music, keeping people away from the remembrance of Allah. We have questioning the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they break. And now, guess who just saw this group of young men? These beautiful, handsome young men. Who saw them? The feet. The females who were beautiful from Qabil's tribe. And they're like, we've been dealing with these busted guys all the time. Hello, who are you? Where have you guys been? We've been up in a mountain or something? Yes, as a matter of fact, we've, we've been in a mountain. And upon this, the next, it's not over yet, friends. When Shaitan flicks the switch on the wall, he's not good enough if he makes one thing fall. Tabarraj. The first thing that happened here, now the men are now spotted. They are seen. So the, Qab, the people of Qabil recognize them. They are beautiful. They've never been seen before. Let's face it, there are about 100 people in both camps. So it's not that many people to mess around with, to, to, to be overwhelmed. I know that person. When a town has 1,000 people, you know who's in the town. So the men said, who are these people? The young men said, what is this sound? And the young women in the community said, hang on. I have to go home and change my clothes. And as we see in the Quran, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, and I need a little help from the Hufat, Tabarruj al Jahiliya. The ayah in the Quran talks about the, the first time that women decided to adorn themselves. Men are not beautiful creatures. As we said at the beginning of this discussion, the first time the women ran home and put the red dust of the earth on their face. They uh, elongated their clothes so that it stretched along, the, uh, along the, the grass. The way that they came and closed their eyes and spoke slowly, this was the first time according to Ibn Abbas. He said the first time that this jahiliyat, that this act of tabarruj, tabarruj, to show yourself the first time that this happened was when the people of Qabil, the women of Qabil, they started to entice the men by dressing beautifully, by talking softly, by saying things like, oh, I've never seen you before, by asking questions that have no answer, but require someone to come closer. On this, he hit three sides. He opened up a club and all of us would naturally fall prey. Wow, that sounds really good. Even the good amongst us would say, it sounds good. No one is going to say, that sounds haram. It's going to, that is not good to listen to, but they'll still say it sounds good. The next group, the rational, the religious amongst us, that's us guys. We're the Sheith people. We're the people who think we're religious. We're reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're reminded of the prophets. We read Quran, we go to the masjid, but shaitan can come to us and not say go to a club. He'll come to us and say, club? Allahu Akbar. You don't care about the people who go to the club? Who's going to give them da'wah? La ilaha illallah. Allah forgive you guys. Astaghfirullah. Sitting in IOK all day long. Allahumma ghfir warham. That's how shaitan gets us. And finally, the beautiful treasures that Allah has given. My sisters, remember. This need, this accentuated push from cosmopolitan to red book to self to, uh, to everything you see is pushing an inadequacy inside you. Allah created you and said you were beautiful. He said, you are so beautiful, you had to cover up. He said, you are so amazing that you should stay close in the homes. And at the highest level, if someone even knocks on your door, thicken your voices. But how is that so backwards? When Miley Cyrus has to go through the stage of being a baby, but then when she's 18, she has to shroud her innocence. Have you guys, please, it's, it's cute in the beginning, fam. But every single female actress that we say was cute, from Full House to the Olsen twins to Lizzie McGuire to, to um, Miley Cyrus, every single one of them, every single one of them, when they came to 18, we encouraged and said, now you're a woman. Selena Gomez was a baby. We said, oh, look at the cute baby. Now look at the eyes of the believer. The eyes of the believer says, Man, that's weird. I feel different. Now it's weird. Because Allah has created something to be treasured.
keep that treasure in the best of forms. And for those of us who struggle and say, music could be haram, could not be haram, let's hang on for a second here. I left this ayah out because I didn't know how, how heavy it was. Hafiz, I'm going to need help on this one. It's either 36 or 56, Bani Israel, fifth page. وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ This is the one ayah we will pick up next week. I will only translate the beginning. Allah told shaytan, go ahead, go on the earth. Remember, this conversation is taking place up there. Iblis said, I'm going to destroy this clay hollow man. So Allah said, وَاسْتَفْ ziz." مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ bi. What's the word? Sautik. What does sautik mean, sisters? Voice. Ibn Abbas, every mufassir. So much so, I, didn't, I couldn't find another opinion. Every mufassir said, bi sauta shaytan, the voice of shaytan is music. Now we're going to go to the haram word, not yet fam. Take it slowly. Wean it off, taper it off like, a, like an addict. Slowly takes an IV, after the IV, tablets, after the tablets, pl uh, you know, placebos, and after that he says, you know what, I just don't need it anymore. It gets a little patch, right? Bisawtik, Allah said, Shaytan, use your voice. وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ And use your cavalry, cavalry and your infantry. We will tackle this again next week. Look what Shaytan did in one stroke. Started music over here, then knocked on this door and said, well, why does Allah want you to do this? And then came back. Did he have to tell the beautiful boys from Sheith salam and the beautiful girls, hey, you guys should hang out? Nope. Natural human inclination. And what then happened? Still yet, shaitan's not done, friends. It's not over till it's over. Till the fat lady sings, it's not over. Now these young men came. They visited the club every Saturday night. And after a while, let's be a little bit more real. What happens in a club? You sit and think about the classical composure of the music? Nah, fam. A little bit more happens in a club. A little bit more happens. And after a little bit more happens, if you can get me to do this with my hands, and then my feet start to tap, and then my head starts to bob, there's one more part of the body that starts to sway from side to side. And I think Ja Rule said it, those hips, those thighs, they hypnotize. We care very careful when we hear the sawt of shaitan, when we hear the whispers of shaitan. They come in a very nice way, right? They come in a rhyming word. But when this attacks us, those young women of Qabil, they began to sway from side to side, and the eyes of the men were lost. Do you say it's the sin of the girls? No. I say it was the sin of who started the music. Is it the fault of the boys? No. It's the fact that if we don't accept we're human, that's the last point from last week, and that's what I end on this week. If we don't accept that we're human, that we're going to make mistakes, that sometimes we're going to get angry, sometimes we're going to lose our cool, sometimes we're going to be attracted to something, sometimes we're going to want to do haram. If we don't accept that, we'll never find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We end on this ayah, surah Bani Israel, Allahu alam, where we will uh, finish next week, but I would like to pick up from here. Everything that is clean and pure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wouldn't be a complete class. It would just be a fun class unless I introduced one dua. I opened up with this dua. I will close with it. Surah Mu'minun. Surah Mu'minun. What surah number is it? Please. Third week. Exactly surah that comes after 22. Oh, bang. Sharp as a blade. Okay. Surah 23, ayah number 97, 98. Please, I apologize for the sarcasm. Let us learn this dua. Make this dua daily. In the morning three times, in the evening three times. This is a masnoon dua. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa reminded us. And from the story of sheath, don't just go back and be like, I think music's haram. Try to take a step higher than this. Go away saying shaitan is going to hit from any angle. And when he hits from these angles, he's going to try to get you to get to a major sin. By the way, at the end of the Saturday night clubs, they ended up committing zina. Unfortunately, this was the first time that we had to deal with this. Music directly led to zina. Rationale directly led to illegal 
intercourse, ayah number 97, 98. Everyone start with the word Rabbi. Rabbi. A'udhu bika. I can't hear the alif and ayin separate, and I would like that to be separate. A'udhu bika. Finish your kasras. Bika. Some of you, young men, you're saying bika. Be. The kasra is not be. It's be. Rabbi a'udhu bika min. Min hamazatish. The whole thing. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen. Dhu bika min hamazati Good. And then the last one is very short. Wa a'udhu bika. You're fusing your alif and ayin together. You're saying auzu bika, wa auzu bika, auzu. Say wa a'udhu bika rabbi. Rabbi. Press your tongue. It's going to go into your nose for a quick second. Ayya. 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 Burun wa a'udhu bika rabbi ayyah burun y'all need to take a tajweed class I happen to know someone who teaches tajweed it's a nice guy Inshallah, we'll try to bring that class over here. There's also a class called Quranic Supplications where we go through the 30 Rabbanas in the Quran. I am very privileged to be able to sit in front of you. Jazakallahu khayrul jaza. All that is clean and pure is from Allah. Mistakes, misrepresentations are my own. Don't take any conclusions from today. We're going to get there together. Don't run home saying music's haram, friends. Slowly, slowly we will get there together to what is correct. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير